So what we've been doing so far is z equals to let's use x and y this is what we've been doing right now in the previous video we said that the modulus of a complex number is denoted by r and the argument is denoted by theta now this over here is the Cartesian form of a complex number so let's catch this no complex number this is the real axis this is the imaginary axis now x and let's call this y so this is your complex number and if I extend this this is r this is theta so if I use the cost trigonometric function say if I say that cos theta so cos theta would be adjacent upon hypotenuse adjacent is x hypotenuse is r so x upon r so x equals to r cos theta and if I use sine trigonometric function sine theta equals to y upon r this means that y equals to r sine theta so when we say that x plus i y let's replace it with r cos theta plus i r sine theta and if I take r common I get cos theta plus i sine theta now this form is called trigonometric form now the theta over here can be either in radians or uh, in degrees so this is the second form a second way to write down a complex number r uh, r which is modulus in the bracket cos theta plus i sine theta now this uh, met, uh, this way is more useful the trigonometric form is more useful when you when you're using de Moivre's theorem to solve equations uh, also uh, through this we can now write the equation in the final form that is the exponential form so if we write down the equation in the exponential form so z the exponential form is z equals to r e i theta this over here theta in the exponential form needs to be in radians so this final one is the exponential form so in the next video we'll talk about uh, de Moivre's theorem and how uh, the trigonometric trigonometric form is used in the de Moivre's theorem and then we'll move on to uh, the different types of loci in the argon diagram